How are you this evening? Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? We're glad that you're here tonight. This is a good crowd. Bill must be preaching. And so we're glad that you're here with us. We're going to have a great time together. We're going to sing together, pray together, worship together. For that's what we've truly come for is to worship the Lord. It's not about us. It's all about him. And that's why we're here tonight. So grab a hymnal. And we're going to sing some old songs tonight. You know how I know they're old? They're in the hymnal, Ron. We know they're old. A lot of churches don't even pick the hymnal up anymore. But aren't you glad that we still found a way to incorporate it in our services? Over on page 364. 364. Sing with me tonight. I came to Jesus weary, worn, and sad. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And now his love has made my heart so glad. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And keeps me singing every day. So glad he took my sins away. He took my sins away. The load of sin was more than I could bear. He took them all away. He took them all away. And now on him I roll my every care. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And keeps me singing every day. I'm so glad he took my sins away. He took my sins away. No condemnation have I in my heart. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. His perfect peace he did to me impart. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And keeps me singing every I'm so glad he took my sins away. He took my sins away. If you will come to Jesus Christ today, he'll take your sins away. He'll take your sins away and keep you happy in his love each day. He'll take your sins away away he took my sins away he took my sins away and keeps me singing every day i'm so glad he took my sins away he took my sins away if you're glad that he's taking your sins away would you just give a real good hearty amen? amen? Well, a few of you, good. Let's sing 349. 349. He keeps me singing. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus. 
Jesus swept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath His sheltering wing, always looking on His smiling face. That is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. And right across the page, 350, in my heart there rings a melody, let's sing together. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody of love i love the christ who died on calvary for he washed my sins away he put within my heart a melody and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory with the angels I will sing will be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody with heaven's harmony in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody of love aren't you glad tonight that we can have a song in our heart and that song helps us through the week doesn't it aren't you glad for that this evening we're going to go to the lord in prayer this evening and we just want him to come and be with us together in this time tonight Continue to pray for the Haddocks family. Uh, Shirley passed away the other day. That's my wife's aunt and uh, Howard and Winifred surfaces. It was their daughter and uh, Edna's sister-in-law. I mean, there's just a big family connection around here for a lot of people and such. But that funeral will be at 1 o'clock on thir or Wednesday here at the church. So pray for the Haddocks family that God would just be very close to them. Continue to pray for Michelle Bailey, that God would be with her and continue to touch her.
then I wonder tonight if you might have requests that you want us to remember tonight. We don't do this often or, or a whole lot, but sometimes I think it's just good. You might have something on your heart that you just think we need to pray about. So I wonder tonight, does anybody have any prayer requests? Dreama? Yes, continue to pray for Jerry Parsons. Uh, still going, undergoing treatment and trying to find out what all's going on with him. So remember Jerry. Are there others? do that let's remember those in Hawaii really a tragic event just pray that God would be very close to them yes okay that's Kathy right let's remember Kathy Koodle are there others You know, even when we don't call them out, God knows what they are. And aren't you glad that he already knows what we need? Pray for the kids as they're back in school. They started Friday. But let's face it, most of them aren't starting until tomorrow. <laughs> there were a lot of them stayed home, I'm sure, on Friday. Uh, a lot of them will be starting back out tomorrow. Let's just pray for the kids as they're back in school. <coughs> pray for our teachers. Pray for our principals, our staff, all of the school workers. Some were down at the school earlier here down at Shoals praying and for their school year. Let's just ask God to have his will and his way throughout our schools in the coming days. Father, tonight we are grateful for you. We are grateful for the chance to be in your house and to be able to call upon you. We are grateful for the chance to Sing with the songwriter, he took my sins away. We're thankful to be able to sing tonight that in my heart there rings a melody. For they're not just words, they're truths that we live and we think about. And we live by, we are glad tonight for salvation. The fact that you've taken our sins away. The fact that you've placed a song upon our hearts. Father, we are grateful for that tonight. Father, tonight I just pray that you would come and minister to us and meet with us in this time together. That your presence and your power would just become uh, very real to us. That we would know when we leave here tonight that we've been in the presence of Almighty God. Not because we've been here, but because you've been here. Father, I pray that tonight you would be with Pastor Bill as he shares the word. Would you just hide him behind the sacred cross? And Father, just anoint him with power from on high. And might the words that come out of his mouth not be his words, but might they be your words. Father, we think tonight of the requests that were made known. We think of the tragedy over in Hawaii tonight. Those families that have been impacted, Father, those that have lost lives, those that have had their lives forever turned upside down we've said it so many times we don't know how you make it through a tragedy without Jesus Christ in your life and father we pray that somehow some way that in all of this that's going on over in that place that men women and boys and girls would be drawn to you and father that you would get glory from this somehow some way get praise honor and glory for what's going on over there and what's happened over there. Father, we think of Kathy tonight and we just ask, Lord, that you'd be with her. Father, as she travels home tomorrow, would you just draw up close to her let her know how much you love her and how much you care. Father, let Michelle know over there in Chillicothe tonight that her church family loves her, her church family cares. We've not forgotten about her. She's still on our hearts. She's still in our minds. And so, Father, tonight I just pray that you would go to that rehab hospital. And, Father, that you would draw up very close to her. And tonight she would know how much you love her and how much we love her. 
Father, I think tonight of the Haddix family and just pray that in a very special way, Father, as we see Shirley laid to rest this week, we've heard the family say this week, it's what she's been longing for. She's finally home. And so, Father, we know this is what she's worked her entire life for. So, Father, we pray that as we celebrate her life, that, Father, you would give comfort to the family and to the friends. But, Father, tonight we just pray that you would be all that that family needs throughout the days ahead. And we know that you'll supply that need. Father, be with us tonight at this time. Would you just come in a very special way? Put your arms of love around us. And as we said, may we know when we leave here tonight that we've been in the presence of Almighty God. And for that, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You know, we don't usually do a special on Sunday night. But we're going to tonight, but you all are going to help sing it. It's on page 348. Susan's already playing it. But I just think it would be good for us to sing tonight this old song that simply says, He touched me. Shackled by a head be burdened neath a load of guilt and shame then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I am no longer the same he touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something wonderful happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole since i met this blessed savior since he cleansed and made me whole i will never see praise him I'll shout it while eternity rolls he touched me oh he touched me and all the joy that floods my soul Something wonderful happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Amen. So, Susan, we're going to do one more I didn't tell you, but I just think we need to do it just real quick. Hold on a minute. It's over on page somewhere 368 368 368 368 I just think I don't know why I just think we ought to sing it and then Bill's going to come and preach since I start for the kingdom since my life he controls since I gave my heart to Jesus the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows the longer I serve him, 
the sweeter he grows the more that i love him more love he bestows he stays like heaven my heart overflows the longer i serve him the sweeter he grows every need he is supplying plenteous grace he bestows every day my way gets brighter the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Pray for Pastor Bill as he comes and shares. Hold on just a minute, Bill. I just want to say how much I love the Lord tonight. He's been with us, I don't know, forever and ever, you know, and I just praise him. He's been so faithful to everything that we've been through for years past and now. He's been with us and I just love him and what a praise he's made tonight. Before, but a lot of songs on Sunday nights takes me back. I can just hear my sweet mama singing alto, and so thankful for being raised and in being instilled in me. But that song, especially the words mean now <laughs> more than I ever, ever knew back then. Even though I knew what it meant, but uh, to live it, and as you grow older, my how I hang on to that, and I'm sure thankful for it. privilege to worship you tonight God we count it an honor and a privilege to be able to just tell of your love and of your mercy and of your grace as the songs that were sung about your love and God had a message tonight about your love for us we pray that you would come and you would strengthen us as your servant tonight that We'll hear that voice of the Holy Spirit and be led by you and directed and guided by you. That you open each heart tonight. Be receptive to that word. Because we know, Father, that it was not just a random act, but it was a prepared plan called a plan of salvation that you came and died and rose again and send him back to God the Father seated there this very hour making intercession for us and God we need you again tonight to just help us and strengthen us that we each one can leave this place knowing that we've been in the presence of an almighty God 
that loves us so much. Amen. Amen. As we were singing that last song, my mind drifted back. And I'm a lot older than Dale, but he was at the church at Sanderson where I pastored several years where I went to church, actually for 55 years as everything but a Sunday school superintendent. And I never did have that position, but I think I held everything else from bottle washer and janitor and, and uh, groundskeeper and uh, whatever else needed to be done. But I thought that how long ago that was, September the 11th, 1959, that I'm a let Jesus come into my life. Should have been years before that. Some of these young people, they don't understand the white knuckle syndrome. Some of us old folks can remember those days. The holy convicting power of God would be on people so strong that they'd hold on to the seats to keep them going to the altar. The same God that was at Sanderson that brought convicting power on people then is still the same God today. Amen. And my prayer is, I'm, I'm a revivalist, I guess. I want to see a move of God. And a move of God has to be a love for God. Every one of his kids that says we're Christian, pastor hit on Christian today, and, and a, a follower of Christ, but... Christian really means Christ-like. And when we begin to become like Christ, we become to put on that, that face of Christ and that agape love that he loves us with, love me years before I accepted him, with agape love, which is unconditional sacrificial love. When we begin to see that, I believe we'll begin to see a corporate revival, but a corporate revival starts with an individual revival. Dreamer gets fired up for Jesus and it'll spill over on my wife. Then she gets fired up for Jesus and there's two of them. Then it may drift over on to, on to Nellie and, and, and Gretchen here and then it gets back on Ron and then it starts spreading. That's just the way the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit wants to be wanted. He wants to come. And then Kathy's class there, one day we was talking about the Holy Spirit. And I said, the problem with us today is we don't release the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is in his children. He's in you, Jack. The Holy Spirit's in you, Debbie. The Holy Spirit is in God's kids. And we just need to release him and let him work. So tonight we're going to, we're going to preach a little bit about love. And, you know, we... Uh, uh, the wife was trying to use all this modern technology stuff to help me out a little bit, and I don't think she ever got to where I wanted to be, but she was a great help to me. Uh, that's, what a, that's what a pastor's wife is. They're a help to the pastor. Hello, Susan. It didn't cost you anything, Randy. That was a good... That was a good. Randy got benefit out of that, and he didn't pay me a penny. But she helped me get my mind on the love God has for us. It's beyond our imagination. It's beyond what we could ever imagine that God loved us and still loves us the way he does. Hey, sometimes I'm a mess. I don't know about the rest of you. Maybe it's just confession night. And you won't have to pay me anything either to go behind the booth and let me tell you all about your forgiving. Don't get into that either. But the love that God had for the lost world, for the mess that Adam and Eve made in the garden, what it took to get that all back for us. So if the scripture that we're going to start with tonight, and we're going to be in some various scriptures, and we're going to close with, with a whole chapter that I think brings out and shows 
the true love of God. But we're going to start with 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. And I love the scriptures when they say, my little children or brethren, whatever, because, hey, that's me. And I like to be talked to by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. Do you? Do you like for the Word of God? Sometimes it searches us out and digs us out. Okay, but I, I like the scripture when it says, my brethren or my little children. And this, John here is writing to this church, and he's calling the Christians there in that church, my little children. And he says, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What in the world is he talking about? The title of this message is Love in Action. That's what John is talking about here, putting love in action. Not just saying something, but doing it. Not just saying I love, you know, I could say I love my wife and I, if I never prove to her by actions, by the things I do for her, she may have a little doubt there. Does he really love me or is that just lip service? We give God a lot of lip service, people. Let me tell you, we as a church age gives God a lot of lip service, but we never carry through and show him, thank you, God, for the love that you showed me. We never give, get there. Y'all okay? Yeah. Told you the truth so far? Well, I got some more. My little children, talking to us as the church, let us not love in just word and tongue, but let us word, uh, love him in deed and in truth. And after saying all this, actually, John says, if anyone sees his brother in need and does not help him, he does not have love. What's it saying? If I see Jack that needs a coat, and I got three coats, probably got four or five in the closet, and I don't give Jack that coat, I really don't care about Jack. I don't love him the way God loved me. God provided me with four coats. I heard a wonderful message one time on passing the blessing. God blesses us for so much and we hoard it up. When God wants us to give, to give it away. To give it away. You got plenty, bless somebody else with it. There's a little uh, a guy up at the shop the other day. He said, hey, preacher, he said, today's my birthday. I, I reached in my pocket and got out a quarter, and I said, well, happy birthday. I know he probably expecting a dollar, but that, I didn't have a dollar at that time in my pocket. <laughs> so I gave him a quarter. And then what that does, that gets their mind centered on, on other things and on then you can drop the bomb, drop the little pearl in. I get ready to say the bomb, but it's, well, it is a bomb too. Drop the word in on them. See? As a chaplain, I get a lot of opportunities to drop the word on people. But you cannot just get in their face. You're going to burn in hell. Don't you tell me. What's that going to accomplish? Like There's a wall. Yes, I do. There's the wall. But if I gave him a quarter and said, hey, happy birthday, Jesus loves you, I love you, like before you go to heaven with me, love, love, love. John here was trying to get the church's attention, expanded on the point that love is actually an act of doing something about a need that they may have. We have needs. God is a great provider. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. But I believe also that God uses us as his people, as the church, to carry that need and supply that need. There's several folks at West Side gathering tonight providing them meals, giving them Jesus food. Jack, Jack's tracks that he writes, he gives me, I don't know, 100 of them a week or 200 a month or whatever, and, and we call that Jesus food. So I lay the hamburgers out on the back, back of the tailgate or hot dogs, and this, this past week, we splurged. I brought them pizza. 
And we say, lay that back there. And I'll tell you what, if I do not put the Jesus food out there, Jack, they say, well, where's that reading material? Where's that Jesus food? Feeding people what they need. See, it's not always about the, the uh, monies or whatever. God requ wants us to give us, give him us. He said, I, pres I, I beseech you therefore, brother, the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. So give God what we got to give. Give to people what God gives us. God want, God's Holy Spirit enables us to do what and to, show, and to share this love and to sow this love like the love he gives me. And I believe he expects that of us. I want you to answer this question. Are deeds a better sign of love than just words? Are deeds or action far more than just mere words? It's sort of like us as parents sometimes. We say, well, don't do as I'm doing, just do as I say. Well, what kind of message is that to our kids? Us, to live the example of a Christian. And that's what the scriptures here, Paul, John is trying to, to tell these people. When we practice agape love, we don't just talk about love, but we put love in action. We put love in action. 1 John 3 verse 16 says this, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And that's not saying that I need to go out here and lay down in front of the car and let somebody run over me just for the sake of Jack. A lot of times in the, in the movies, we, we find that people take a bullet for somebody else. That's sort of what God is saying here. We need to take the bullet for someone else. If we really love, if I love my wife, and I told her here not very long ago, some of you might not know this, I think it's pretty much broadcasted throughout the church now, that we're going to renew our vows this coming Saturday. <laughs> and after 50 years, she's took a lot of bullets for me, and I've took a lot of bullets for her. It's just the way it is. And I told her the other day, I said, I, said, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love her. I have told Randy, he don't have, well, I haven't yet, but I'm going to. He don't have to tie that knot so tight like the first preacher did for 50 years because my boss, my boss tells me I got 20 more good years in me. Well, I'll be 100 if I got 20 more good years in me. And I told him, I said, you provide me a chauffeur. And I said, I'll shuffle along. And I'll say, <laughs> I'll tell him about Jesus, Tony. But we may have another good 10, 15, 20. Maybe I do have another 50. I don't know. God got it all under control. But I don't hear of too many people been, been 100 year, 120 or 30 years old. All right. John, 1 John 3, 1 says this. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Behold, what manner of love God had for us. William Barclay, he was a Scottish author and a minister. He had this quote, fine words will never take the place of fine deeds. No amount of talk of Christian love will take the place of the kindly action to someone in need. End quote. Love in action. Love in action. How did Christ live out his love for us? What, what was the real event that God and Christ, one and the same, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, live out his love for us? Was it in just word? Well, I love, I love this man. I love mankind. I love, I love them, but, you know, they messed up once and, yeah, I'm, I'm done with them. He told the Israelite people that several times. 
We're done. I'm done with you. But God proved his love. Two ways not to love. Just word and tongue. They don't cut it. But two ways to love is acts and definite acts and words to be put into action. Two ways that we really need to love. We're going to get into some, some and we're not going to go through all this and read it and all that, but it's a very, I think, an important scripture here that we can read at home and study at home because it really tells us and shows us a greatest picture of love, I believe, that's in the Bible. And it starts in Matthew 26 through verse 36, and, or, or 26, 36 through Matthew 27, and the whole chapter, the 27th chapter of Matthew, gives us this picture of Jesus Christ and his death. And what all he went through. In the background of our scriptures as it's posted up here, you can sort of see a picture of Jesus with the crown of thorns and the blood running down his face. And we're going to get into a little bit of the suffering that Jesus went through to redeem me and you. Love in action. He didn't just say they need a Savior. He became our Savior. Grass pad. He didn't say we just need a Savior, but he became our Savior. What all he went through, what all he endured. Every one of us in here tonight in this sanctuary and you that's watching online, that God carried out this plan of salvation and actually required Jesus to suffer. Suffer, yes, even unto death. So let's look at some of this suffering for the rest of our message tonight. Let's look at Gethsemane. There in Gethsemane, when he was there with his disciples, and we know in Matthew 26, 47, it talks about Judas, one of his disciples. And, and he came and planted a, a betrayal kiss on the one that they were to take. And that was Jesus, of course. And I thought, you know, that that had to be heart-wrenching to Jesus. A person that had walked with him and had seen all these miracles and seen everything he'd done. And I know that this was all part of the, part of the plan. I understand all that. But it's still, Jesus Christ was human. If you've got a real good friend and that friend betrayed you, and that friend, we find later, Peter even denied him three times. All this was going on, a mental suffering that Jesus went through for my sins and your sins. Suffering. Not necessarily the physical pain. I believe one of the worst times, and we'll get into this, I believe, a little later, was when God turned his back on his very son because he could not look upon sin. That was one of the hardest things, I believe, for Jesus was when his father turned away as he hung there on the cross. Mental stress, mental anguish. He, the disciples, Peter, James, and John, that inner circle, they went to sleep while he was agonizing about the cup that he was about ready to take. He prayed, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. But I believe Jesus there in the garden, he made up his mind. He released it all, surrendered it all. And he was able to go through all the rest of this suffering, mentally and physically, that he suffered. He was able to go through that because he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. He released it. That was what he came for. He, Jesus Christ came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. I was one of them lost one day. He came seeking me. Came into this world to die for me. 
Luke 22, 44 says, been in anguish, agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. I've done a little research on this and even asked Sydney, my, my oldest granddaughter today at, at dinner, I said, Sydney, I, I read that there was a little bit of uh, maybe some surveys or some uh, tests that had been done that a person, mental anguish can get so strong and so, so uh, stressful that the pores actually begin to ooze blood from their body. Extreme mental suffering. So this scripture here is basically saying that Jesus' blood, as he agonized there about this, that his sweat actually became a bloody sweat. A bloody sweat. For me. For me. So he was betrayed by Judas. Peter, James, and John went to sleep on him. Peter denied him three times. He had a mock trial. He wasn't guilty of nothing, but they kept trying to find some guilt about him. He gave him vinegar to drink when he cried out for thirst. He was crucified between two thieves, which was a sim symbolic in that Roman times that the worst criminal was hung on the middle cross. So he was considered the worst of the worst. Mental suffering. As I said in Matthew 27, 46, he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God himself turned away from his son. It was my sins, it was your sins, the sins of the whole world that kept Jesus on the cross. It wasn't those nails. I believe one of the scriptures says he could have called legions of angels to take him down. But no, he was willing to die there for me. Love in action. Love in action. John 3.16, a very familiar scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. God so loved. It's not changing the word of God. I don't believe it's, it's, it's just make it emphasis on, on us as individuals. For God so loved Bill Burdett. God so loved you. Put your name there. And all that he mentally and physically he went through was for you, for me. Love, love, love in action. They smote him with the palms of their hand. They scrounged him. And I looked up what this really meant. The Romans try to come up with many, many different ways to inflict severe bodily punishment upon a criminal. This scrounge had, it consisted of a handle with 12 leather cords with jagged pieces of metal, bone, maybe stone on the ends of those cords. It was applied to the back, to the loins, and sometimes even to the face of that person that they were flogging or scrounging. Severe pain. If my math is right, they hit him 39 times with 12 cords. Totals up to 468 stripes that he endured for you and me. crown on his head nails in his hands blood flowing 
Do I still believe in the blood? Absolutely. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. The blood of Jesus Christ covers you and me today. If you're one of God's kids, it's because of the blood of Jesus that you are saved tonight. That you have eternal life tonight. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. And I thought, you know, the, so much hatred that the Jews had and the, the priest and the different ones that were crucifying Christ. And maybe that big Roman soldier that had that scrounge, he was, he was putting extra emphasis into that, cutting deep into the flesh. I stabbed myself with a knife after dinner today. It hurt. made me think of those cords they cut into the flesh of Jesus it hurt people Jesus was a man Jesus was a man every bit of this mental, every bit of this physical pain that he endured was for my sins and your sins. Get that picture. Love in action. Let's go one step beyond that. Those that refuse to accept Jesus Christ are going to be in far more pain than that. They'll be in the burning fires of an eternal hell. Have you ever burnt yourself? Think about when my dad was still lost. Mom prayed for dad 40, a little over 40 years before he was saved. Dad and I was out burning brush one time and had this big old truck tire right in the middle. That's how we used to start fires, brush fires. Get a big old tire, and we, we had a crude oil tank behind my house, and we get five gallons of that crude oil, and we pour it on that in that tire, and then we light it. I was there watching that fire burn and watching that phosphorus or whatever that tire was made out of, sulfur or whatever. It was just bubbling. I believe that's part of the description of hell, brimstone, fire. I saw Dad in the middle of that fire. That gives you an unction to pick up a pace a little bit and pray a little harder. A few years later, Dad was saved. But I had a burden for Dad from that moment on. Again, if we love people, we don't want to see them die and go to hell. God certainly don't, because he said it's not God's will that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. If we want to see a great move of God, we've got to have that love. We don't want to see people lost. We want to see people saved. We want to see them go to heaven with us. That's what I try to tell the guys. I said, I want every one of you to go to heaven with me. The Bible says in Isaiah 52, verse 14, his visage, V-I-S-A-G-E, was so mired more than any man. He was beat up. He was cut. He was marred. And I was partly responsible for that because of my sins that he had to endure. So the post Isaiah 53, Isaiah chapter 53, that's one of my 
favorite scriptures. One of Jack's favorite scriptures. And this is talking about the Messiah. Talking about my Lord and Savior. Your Lord and Savior. If you're a Christian tonight. I'm going to ask you if you can and would stand as we read this. This is sacred to me. This is a sacred, sacred scripture to me. Who hath believed our report? And to whom and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a raw root out of a dry ground. He hath no more no form nor comeliness, and we and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Not a very pretty picture, is it? He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and he's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make this his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The question I leave you with tonight, I leave this question with myself, the challenge with me and you, that we purpose in our heart tonight that we will not just love in word and tongue, but indeed in truth. We'll purpose to tell people about the love of God. We'll go out into the hedges, the highways, and the byways and telling people about a loving God that loved them enough that he died that they could live. 
As you stand tonight, just bow your heads and you just ask God. I believe the scripture talks about David. He said, search me, O Lord. See if there be any wicked ways in me. And I pray tonight that we each one will search ourselves. And ask the Holy Spirit to give us leadership, give us direction. There may be somebody that God has already put on your heart that you need to go and you need to tell them about this love. This agape love, unconditional, sacrificial love that God loved each and every one with. Go out. Start the flame. Fan the flame. Revival will start with one person at a time. One person at a time. We'll be from individual to corporate. So as we in closing prayer tonight, you just ask God in your own way to help you spread the love of Jesus. Father, we come to thee as we close this service today. We come to you humble as we know how to become. Seeking your way and your will. Seeking your direction. Asking you, Father, that you would Search our hearts. Give us that unction from the Holy One. That we'll have a greater burden, a greater desire to see the lost saved. To see, see people born into the family of God. To be vessels. be vessels and conduit for your Holy Spirit to flow through. And we're so thankful for that Holy Spirit. So thankful for the songs that were sung tonight, God, that talked about your love. For the word tonight that's went forth talking about your love for mankind. Now, Father, may we Show that love. Not just talk it, but put it love in action. Go with us as we depart from this place tonight. Go with us tomorrow, down through the days of this week. That we will not just say, Lord, I love you, but we'll show our love as we pray and as we read your word, as we witness of your saving and your keeping power. And we give you all glory and all praise tonight because it's you that deserves it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Y'all dismissed, have a great week. Pray that God will use us each one down through the week. Tell someone about Jesus.